Hello, my sweet summer children. In today's video, we will be breaking down The Lesser Evil, the third short story in the first book in the Witcher series titled The Last Wish. If you missed the first two short stories, their breakdowns are linked in the Witcher playlist and as well in the description box. The Lesser Evil is probably my favorite of all the short stories, and I think this short will be featured in the new Witcher series on Netflix. The Lesser Evil short is how Geralt got the nickname Butcher of Blaviken. It is very thought provoking. There is that classic fairy tale, that twisted and way darker to say the least fairy tale. This is going to have some Snow White and the Seven Dwarves vibes, but let's dive right in. Geralt has come to Blaviken and he's toting the dead body of a Kikimora on the back of his horse as he makes his way into town. A Kikimora is like an insect type monster that dwells in swamps. I'm almost sure that in the trailer for the new series, this is a Kikimora. So Geralt comes to town with a dead one looking to collect a reward for killing it. Although there is no reward being offered because no one even knew that the thing was there. So the town people are freaking out. They're following Geralt. It's really busy in the city because they're preparing for market day tomorrow. Geralt ends up linking up with his old friend, the alderman, Kaladaman. I probably didn't fucking say that right. Geralt shows him the Kikimora and Geralt finds out there is no reward for the beast. That's a shame. I could do with a small sum to get through the winter. The witcher took a sip from his jug, wiped away the froth. I'm making my way to Yspadin, but I don't know if I'll get there before the snows block the way. I might get stuck in one of those little towns on the Latonsky Road. Do you plan to stay long in Blaviken? No, I've no time to waste, and winter is coming. Basically, Geralt is on his way to Yspadin and killing monsters along the road there to try to make some money to help him get through winter. They don't know what to do with the Kikimora, but Carrie Pebble says they should take it to the town wizard. Maybe he will pay for it. They go to the wizard's tower. Keep in mind, wizards and witchers don't necessarily like each other. They don't respect each other's ways of life. The wizard at first doesn't want any visitors today, but the wizard recognizes Geralt. He knows Geralt and his voice. The wizard allows Geralt in and only Geralt. Also, the wizard doesn't give a fuck about the Kikimura. The wizard has bigger problems. The wizard is Stregobor, but Stregobor's problem is someone or something wants to kill him and he's in hiding. The person or thing has found him and will likely kill him tomorrow. My facing death doesn't impress you much, does it? Stregobor, said Geralt. That's the way of the world. One sees all sorts of thing when one travels. Two peasants kill each other over a field, which the following day will be trampled flat by two counts and their retinues trying to kill each other off. Men hang from trees at the roadside. Brigands slash merchants' throats. At every step in town, you trip over corpses and gutters. In palaces, they stab each other with daggers. And somebody falls under the table at a banquet every minute, blue from poisoning. I'm used to it. So why should a death threat impress me? One directed at you at that. Stregobor is upset with Geralt's response to his impeding death. He considers Geralt a friend and is wanting help, but Geralt kind of sees things different. Geralt is kind of like, you know, well, the last time I seen you, you were shady as fuck. They last saw each other in Colvert. Geralt had killed a monster and went to court of the King Itty to try to collect payment for killing it and Stregobor basically called him a murdering machine and a scavenger and King Itty not only didn't pay, he gave Geralt a few hours to leave the city and Geralt barely escaped with his life. They seem to disagree about killing of monsters but Geralt does say... To just calm down and tell me what's threatening you and I'll see if I can help. Dragobor then talks of the curse of the Black Sun. Geralt knows about it and believes that it is utter bullshit. This curse of the Black Sun is said to be this curse, this prophecy that basically the end of the world will come from 60 girls born under the Black Sun, which is an, an eclipse. 
Geralt calls it the mania of Mad Eltabold because he was like some crazy wizard that started this nonsense. So Strekabor insists that the wizard wasn't mad at all. Geralt thinks that all of the wizards just took advantage of a madman's writings to use the girls as political fodder. They broke up marriages and alliances, imprisoned girls from noble houses. They debate the merits of the curse of the Black Sun, and Geralt cannot be convinced. Shit, neither can I, for real. Like, I think it's bullshit. So Stregobor tells Geralt the story of the girl who wants to kill him. Her name is Renfrey. At a glance, Renfrey has some of those Snow White vibes. Evil queen stepmother orders the death of her stepdaughter. The stepdaughter is hiding out in the woods with not seven dwarves, but seven gnomes. Supposedly, the stepmother looked into a mirror and to see the future of her country and her stepdaughter, who was born under the black sun, was going to bring down blood on her country. The stepmother named Iridia basically hired Stregobor to handle Renfrey, but, but Renfrey escaped from all of that and her life has been awful ever since. So Stregobor wants Geralt to kill her, but Geralt does not want to because he does not believe that she's a monster. He thinks the prophecy is nonsense and he wants no part of this. Geralt, said Stregobor. When we were listening to Eltabald, many of us had doubts, but we decided to accept the lesser evil. Now I ask you to make a similar choice. Evil is evil, Stregobor, said the Witcher seriously as he got up. Lesser, greater, middling, it's all the same. Proportions are negotiated, boundaries blurred. I am not a pious hermit. I haven't done only good in my life, but if I'm to choose between one evil and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. So Geralt leaves. He ends up at the Gold Court, a tavern of sorts, and that's where he meets Renfri, the girl that wants to kill Stragabor. I've heard about you, she said. You're Geralt, the white-haired witcher from Rivia. Is Stragabor your friend? No. That makes things easier. Not much. Don't expect me to look on peacefully. Stragabor dies tomorrow, she said quietly brushing the unevenly cut hair from her forehead. It would be the lesser evil if he died alone. She wants to talk the possibilities over with Geralt, but Geralt has dinner arrangements with the alderman and his woman, so he leaves. But when he returns to his attic bedroom, Renfrey is there waiting for him. She tells him her life story, how her stepmother and Stregobor hired a huntsman to kill her, but the huntsman took pity and raped and robbed her instead. I mean, what the fuck kind of pity is that? And then Stregobor and her stepmother also tried to poison her with an apple laced with nightshade, more Snow White vibes, but she also gave him some philosophy on evil and lesser evil and true evil. Garrett tells her to prove everyone wrong about being a monster and leave Stregobor be. At first, she laughs at that, but after some talking, she tells Geralt he has won. And they bang. They have sex. And she knows already how all of this will end because she gives out some prophecy. In the morning, Geralt realizes that Renfrey has lied. And Geralt didn't win, and she's not going to leave, and she's not going to give up. She's actually going to start slaughtering people in the marketplace to draw the wizard out. A local wizard is duty-bound to try to save the town in an event like this. Geralt goes to the market and engages in a slaughter of his own. He fights Renfrey's folk and ends up killing Renfrey. So Stregobor has been watching all of this through a crystal ball, and he comes there wanting to autopsy the body. Geralt is beside him himself and he says Stregobor cannot and if he touches a hair on her head that he will kill him. Stregobor tells Geralt to come with him and the alderman, Geralt's friend, tells Geralt never to come to Blaviken again. The people also start throwing stones at him. This is how Geralt got the title the Butcher of Blaviken. Now the prophecy Renfrey gave Geralt the night before did come to pass. I pity you, she said, slowly gazing at the medallion. You claim a lesser evil doesn't exist. You're standing on a flagstone, running with blood, alone, and so very alone because you can't choose. But you had to. And you'll never know. You'll never be sure if you were right. And your reward will be a stoning and a bad word. I pity you. And you? 
asked the witcher quietly, almost in a whisper. I can't choose either. What are you? I am what I am. Where are you? I'm cold. This is exactly what happened. As she lay dying, she told Geralt, I'm cold. And Geralt will never know if he made the right choice because he refused to let Stregobor do an autopsy on Renfrey. If Renfrey was not a monster, the monster that Stregobor claimed, and Geralt killed her, I don't think he wanted to know. Renfrey offered Geralt a lesser evil, and so did Stregobor, but he couldn't choose because evil is evil. As the reader, between Stregobor and Renfrey, in my opinion, killing Stregobor would be the lesser evil. But in the story, if what Stregobor says is true, killing Renfrey is the lesser evil. And then if what Renfrey says is true, then killing Stregobor is the lesser evil. To find out if Geralt made the right choice, all Geralt has to do is let Stregobor do the autopsy. Have you gone mad? You're wounded, in shock. An autopsy is the only way we can confirm. Don't touch her. Stregobor, seeing the raised blade, jumped aside and waved his staff. All right, he shouted. As you wish, but you'll never know. You'll never be sure. Never. Do you hear, Witcher? And that's the thing. He doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to be a killer. He's not a thug and he doesn't believe in a lesser evil. Killing a monster is one thing, but he didn't kill a monster. He killed the victim of a monster and the monster got away. And that is the thing that Geralt fears. Stregobor was the greater evil in the story and killing him would have been the lesser evil. What he did to Renfrey, what the wizards did to those girls was madness. It's unforgivable. Renfrey had every right to seek vengeance on Stregobor. Geralt didn't believe the curse coming into this thing. He always thought it was bullshit. Two people are calling each other monsters and Geralt needs to find the monster and spare the other. He needs to find the lesser evil, but he can't. And when he's forced to choose, he doesn't want to know if he chose right. I think the lesser evil will be featured in the Netflix series because the trailer did show some scenes that look like it could be from the lesser evil. Also, Stregobor was casted and he will be played by Lars Michelson. And Stregobor only appears in this story. So we should be getting the lesser evil in all its glory or maybe Stregobor will have a bigger role or the voice of reason will be a thing where Geralt is dreaming all of these shorts. I don't know. But what do you think? As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports Shame. me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a Shame. thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button. Hit Shame. that notification bell. And join Shame. the sweet summer family. Okay, Shame. my sweet summer children. Have a good day. Shame. Shame. Shame.